اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم I seek the protection of Allah against the devil. بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم In the name of Allah, the most beneficent and merciful. ربی شرح لی صدری ویسر لی امر وحلو لگتتم من لسانی یفقہ قولی Oh my Lord, open for me my chest. Grant me the self-confidence, contentment and boldness and make loose the knot from my tongue that they understand my speech. Assalamu alaikum. May peace, blessings and mercy of Allah be upon you and to all the messengers of Allah and in particular on the noble and the final messenger Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, his family and his companions. We will be starting our lecture on Section A Financial Statement Analysis. It has the weightage of 20% in exams. Another name of Financial Statement Analysis is Ratio Analysis. And we will learn some of the most important formulas in this video. Classification of Ratios The classifications of ratios are as follows. Liquidity Ratios which measure the sufficiency of the firm's cash resources to meet its short-term obligations. Leverage, Capital Structure, Solvency and Earnings Coverage Ratios which evaluate the firm's ability to satisfy its debt and obligations for other fixed finance charges such as operating leases by looking at the mix of its financing sources and its historical earnings. Activity Ratios which provide information on a firm's ability to manage its current assets which includes the accounts receivable and inventory and current liabilities which includes the accounts payable efficiently. Profitability Analysis which measures the firm's profit concerning its total revenue or the amount of net income from each dollar of sales and its return on invested assets. Market Ratios and Earnings Per Share Analysis or Shareholder Ratios which describe the firm's financial condition in terms of amounts per share of stock. Important Formulas The formula to calculate the operating income is Sales or Services Revenues minus Cost of Goods Sold is equals to the Gross Profit. Gross Profit is then subtracted from the Selling, General and Administrative Expenses is equals to the Operating Income. Earnings Before Interest and Taxes it is sometimes known as the EBIT. Operating income plus interest and the dividend income. If it is a non-operating gain, we will add it. And if it is a non-operating losses, we will subtract it. Then plus or minus gain or loss from operations of discontinued operations, including the gain or loss on disposal before tax is equals to the earnings before interest and taxes. Earnings before taxes. Earnings before interest and taxes is subtracted from the interest expense is equals to the earnings before taxes. Working capital. Current assets minus of the current liabilities is the working capital. Current ratio. Current assets divided by the current liabilities is equals to the current ratio. Quick Ratio Cash plus net receivables plus marketable securities. This whole product is then divided with the current liabilities and it comes the Quick Ratio. Cash Ratio Cash and cash equivalents are added with the marketable securities. The resultant amount is then divided with the current liabilities and comes the Cash Ratio. Cash flow ratio. Operating cash flow is divided with the period and current liabilities, which equals to the cash flow ratio. Net working capital ratio. Net working capital is divided with the total assets is equals to the net working capital ratio. Financial leverage ratio. Total assets is divided by the total equity to arrive at the financial leverage ratio. 
degree of the financial leverage. Percentage of the future change in net income is divided with the percentage of the future change in earning before interest and taxes to arrive at the degree of the financial leverage. Degree of operating leverage. Percentage of future change in earning before interest and taxes is divided by the percentage of the future change in sales to arrive at the degree of operating leverage. Degree of total leverage. Percentage of the future change in net income is divided the percentage of the future change in sales to reach at the degree of total leverage. Debt to equity ratio. Total liability is divided by the total equity to arrive at the debt to equity ratio. Long term debt to equity. Total debt is subtracted. Total debt minus the current liabilities. This product is then divided with the total equity to arrive at the long term debt to equity. Total debt to total assets which is sometimes also known as the total debt to total assets and its formula is total liabilities divided by the total assets and it comes the debt to the total assets times interest earned ratio earnings before interest and taxes is divided by the interest expense to arrive at the times interest earned ratio fixed charge coverage ratio Earnings before fixed charges and taxes divided by the fixed charge is equals to the fixed charge coverage ratio. Cash flow to the fixed charges ratio. Adjusted operating cash flow is divided by the fixed charges to arrive at the cash flow to the fixed charges ratio. Accounts receivable turnover ratio. Net annual credit sales is divided by the average gross accounts receivable to arrive at the accounts receivable turnover ratio number of days receivable held ratio number of days receivable held ratio is equals to the 365 divided by the receivables turnover inventory turnover ratio annual cost of goods sold divided by the average inventory to arrive at the inventory turnover ratio day sales in inventory ratio 365 divided by the inventory turnover is equals to the day sales in inventory ratio. Accounts payable turnover ratio. Annual credit purchases divided by the average accounts payable is equals to the accounts payable turnover ratio. Days purchases in payables ratio. 365 divided by the accounts payable turnover is equals to the days purchases in payables ratio. Operating cycle. Day sales in inventory plus the day sales in receivables is equals to the operating cycle. Cash cycle. Day sales in inventory plus day sales in receivables minus days purchases in payables is equals to the cash cycle. Total asset turnover ratio. Sales divided by the average total assets is equals to the total asset turnover ratio. Fixed asset turnover ratio. Sales divided by the average net property plant and equipment is equals to the fixed asset turnover ratio. Profit margin. Net income after interest and taxes is divided by these net sales to arrive at the profit margin. Book value per share. Total stockholders equity minus the preferred equity. This amount is then divided by the number of common shares outstanding to arrive at the book value per share. Market to book ratio. Market price per share divided by the book value per share is equals to the market to book ratio. Vertical common size financial statements. A simple vertical common size financial statement covers one year's operating results and expresses each component as a percentage of total. For example, fixed assets will not be stated as a dollar amount, but instead will be stated as a percentage of the total assets. 
each expense item will be presented as a percentage of total revenue horizontal trend series analysis horizontal trend series analysis is used to evaluate trends for a single business over the several years the first year is the base year and the amount for subsequent years are presented not as the dollar amount but as the percentage of the base year amount with the base year assigned a value of 100 percentage or the 100 please like this video share it with your friends colleagues and social media accounts to spread the light of knowledge may allah lord of the heavens and the earth bless you in this world and in particular in life hereafter amen have a nice day take care allah hafiz